Hi, so I'm going to be showing you guys how to do an oval eye rig for your characters. Um, I'm going to try to make this as fast as possible, but I do have to do some little explaining. So if you want to skip to directly how to make an oval eye rig, go to this timestamp. But if you want me to walk you through like the logic behind it so you understand what you're doing, um, you will want to watch this whole video. So let's get into what we're actually going to be doing in this video. So this is an oval eye. Okay, it's, it's a stylistic choice. It, it looks good for the character, but in rigging, it comes out to be a problem. But you can actually get it to work, okay? You can get this to work. And this, these are not UVs. These are, like, it's an actual mesh. It's an oval mesh that's moving around without affecting the oval shape. So, we're going to get into how to make this in a bit. But first, let's explain what the problems are with not doing it this way. Um, what you would typically have, the first problem you'd notice from a typical oval eye rig is that, oh, like, I'm moving this controller around and the oval is messing up the eye socket thingy-majig. You know, you wouldn't have this problem with a spherical eye because it's rotating on itself, but with an oval you have a different shape. This happens. You might think, okay, let me think of a solution here. What if I did UVs for my eyes? What if my iris was actual UVs? That is a solution, but it's not the best one. The reason why is that, you know, this looks good, right? It looks like a name constraint. Oh, cool, yeah, but it's actually not. These locator values are being plugged in directly to the UV translate values, right? So it's like a fake aim constraint. I'm telling the locator, okay, so when your value is at seven over here in Y, I want your UV Y value to also be at seven. You know, it's just an example, but it gives you an idea of how like the locator it looks like the iris is following it, but it's actually just a translation. So, you know, okay, well, Nick, who cares if it looks like that? It, it works, right? Yes, it works, but as an animator, you know, this isn't a real aim constraint. So I'm limited, you know, my aim locators are always gonna be following the head's rotation. So if you wanted to rotate the head, but keep the eyes in one place, you just can't do that with this technique. So UV eyes, it is not a solution. Also, if I wanted to scale the iris up and down, you also can't do that. Because, you know, if you look at the Malcolm rig, how they made this, the iris scale up and down is that they have the actual mesh of the iris scaling up and down with a blend shape. You can't do that with this because the iris is a texture. So the only way to do it would be for you to have like different textures that you're cycling through. You see, something like this. So I have like three different textures plugged in. But that's just like, I'm limited to the textures I have. I can't freely scale it up and down. It's gross. But this technique right here, this God-given technique is so simple. And it gets the meshes moving. Notice how it's an actual iris mesh. So if you wanted to scale the iris up and down, you can do that. Because you can just make an, a blend shape of you know the, the iris faces scaled up, a blend shape of them scaled down, plug that in a controller, and you have your iris scale controller, you know? Um, and this is an actual aim constraint. So if I wanted to uh, tell it, okay, well, I want this character's eyes to stay in this position, but I want to be able to rotate his head, you can do that with this technique. So this is really just like the perfect oval eye uh, controller setup. So how do we actually get this effect? It is very simple. So let's go right back to basics. You're going to make a sphere and you're gonna make two locators. So you're gonna notice that this uh, little eye rig that we're about to set up is basically just the um, bouncing ball rig that we learned in like, I think third semester. So uh, you're gonna have your sphere and you're gonna make, you're gonna give names to these locators. So I'm gonna call this one rotate and this one's gonna be called scale. So what we want, okay, we're thinking of like what we want before doing it. What I want is to be able to rotate the mesh of the iris, or the mesh of the ball, without affecting its oval shape. So let's start doing these little parent uh, relationships here. You're going to make the sphere, which is called the eye. You're going to make it a child of the rotation. And the rotation is a child of the scale. So they just disappeared because uh, I was isolating these objects. Um, so basically, what we have here is this little setup. And this is all you need to have for the, to have the eye rig work properly. So 
basically, if you're familiar with parenting relationships, whatever kind of transformations you do on the child will not be apparent on the parent, right? Like, that's just what it is. Uh, that's, you know, how parent-child relationships work. And so whatever I do in the rotation, if I rotate this like 125, whatever, if I go on the scale, there are no transformations. So I think you're starting to see how this can work. If I scale something on the parent, right? So I'm going to give this, this sphere the shape that I would want my oval eye to have. Um, I can rotate the child. And again, it's not going to affect the transformations on its parent. So you see, we have our iris right here. It's rotating and the sphere of the oval is not changing. See how simple that setup is? This is the exact same setup that you would use when you're making a bouncing ball to have the ball rotate, but also squash at the same time. Um, so this is basically the setup. Just to help you uh, show how this can be put into practice, I'm gonna make the aim constraint right now. So um, basically, we're just gonna rotate this eye 90 degrees so that it's actually looking forward properly. And we're gonna freeze transformations on this. Uh, just because we want to stay clean. This is where like I want my eye to be from the start. So you can freeze transformations on pressing by pressing on this little guy, or you can also go to, uh, I think it's modify, freeze transformations. Um, so we have our iris right here. For the sake of this demonstration, I'm just going to paint its faces like a different color, just so that you can actually see the transformation. So I'm just going to assign it a random material, say this one right here. Great, so we have our iris, right? Now we're gonna create the simplest aim constraint possible. So I'm just gonna create another locator and this is going to be what the iris is always gonna be looking at. So ideally you would uh, zero out the transformations on this locator. Uh, we have a little script for that. So hopefully you guys have that script. If not, you know, you can find a way to do that. It's quite simple. <laughs> just a Google search will help. And we're going to constrain this locator to the iris. Now, before I actually do that, here's the thing, is that when, oh, I just gotta auto save real quick. This is only going to work if you're rotating the rotation locator, okay? Which is why we're gonna be constraining this aim constraint to the rotation locator. If you select the scale, it's not gonna work. If you select the eye, it is gonna work, but you don't want to be animating geometry. So that's why we have this rotate locator right here so that you're not animating geometry. Um, so we are going to constrain this locator and then I'm going to control click rotate, uh, the rotate locator. I'm going to go constrain aim, make sure maintain offset is off. Uh, scene up, that's all right. You can have an up node here. You would just have to write up node on object up if you know what an up node is, but it works with scene up as well, just like that. And there we have it. We have our aim constraint. See, simple as that. Um, so you have your eye set up. Now, I'm just gonna warn you of some issues that this also comes with before you encounter them yourself. If you have a setup like this, don't skin this mesh to your joints. Because if you skin this eye to your joints, it's gonna mess up the eye, uh, the, the, the setup that you have. So what you're actually supposed to do, let me just bring these eyes back uh, over here. What you're supposed to do is you make this whole eye setup that you have, which is right here. So let me just unparent it just for funsies. Oh, I can't actually unparent a, a reference. Okay, well, that's fine. Basically, you make, you select your scale locator, then you select your head, and then you press P, and you make the this whole eye setup a child of the head control. You don't want to skin it because if you skin it, just watch, try to do it yourself and you'll see what's going to happen. It just doesn't work anymore. But if you just make it a child, you see, oh, it works beautifully. Sometimes you just don't question things, you obey. And if you don't want to obey to me, you can try skinning it. You're going to see it's not going to work and you'll be like, oh, wow, Nick was right. So there it is. This is how to set up an oval eye control. So don't limit yourself to spherical eyes just because you might think it's easier for rigging. Have the comfort of knowing that oval eyes can work just as well. And I hope this was helpful. Yep, that's it. Bye.